This morning, our scripture reading is found in Luke chapter 2. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angels had given him before he was conceived. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem named or called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. <clears throat> Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the, the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and, and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at, at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that was, is spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, and the, the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at, at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child, all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Mary and Joseph had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we hear a lot about the Christmas story every, uh, every December. You know, the, now, the announcement to Mary and Joseph and, and to the shepherds. Uh, there's the, the birth in the stable and those who come to, to worship and, and adore the, the Christ child. But what a, you know, as we hear about the, the birth, what about the time between the birth and the, the time of Jesus' public ministry? Actually, as we look in Scripture, we see very little about that, that time between his birth and the beginning of, of his public ministry. You know, in Luke chapter 2, we've, we've got a, one story of when Jesus was 12, of how he and his parents had gone to, to Jerusalem for, for the Passover, and they headed back home, and, and Joseph thought uh, Jesus was with Mary, and Mary thought Jesus was with Joseph, and, and they get a ways out of town and realize Jesus isn't with them. They go back, and where do they find him? He's in the temple, talking with, with the, the religious leaders. You know, there's not a lot that we, we hear about Jesus between his birth and, and his public ministry. But today we're going to look at, at another piece of the Christmas story that, that sometimes gets forgotten or, or sometimes overlooked. You know, it's uh, when they take Jesus to, uh, to, to the temple to, um, to, to be dedicated to, to the Lord, to, to keep their, their religious responsibility. You know, then also there's... After what we're talking about today will, will come the story of the, of, of the Magi or the wise men who, who come bringing gifts to, to Jesus. Well, chronologically, the next story that is recorded in Scripture after Jesus' birth is found in, in Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 21. 
It says, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. Now, for years, I always thought that circumcision was something that the priests did, that parents would take their, their children to, uh, to the temple to be circumcised by the priest, but, but that was not the case. Actually, the circumcision happened on the eighth day, and then parents took their, their firstborn child to, to be consecrated to the Lord on the, the 40th day after the birth. And so often what would happen is when, the, when a child was, was born during those first eight days, particularly if it was the firstborn male, you know, there would be family and friends that, that would come in and, and, and celebrate and try and support the, the family. They would probably um, bring, them, bring them some food, maybe bring them some supplies, bring, bring them gifts. It, it was a time of, of, of celebration and support. And, and also when it came to, to the eighth day when they had the circumcision, it was normally the father that actually performed the, the circumcision, that there were others who, who were there to, to celebrate and, and support them in, in that process. Well, we don't really know who was with Mary and Joseph during these eight days. We know that there were shepherds that came to the stable, but, but we don't know who else may have come to, to give them support on, in that time. You know, other than, than the shepherds, you know, we don't know if there was anyone in the stable, and, and by day eight, we don't know where they were living, but they probably were not still in, in the stable. But, you know, there were, you know, as they came to, to the day of circumcision, it was also the day that they would name the child. Now, like most parents, that uh, they have some idea what they're going to name the child before the, the child's born. Mary and Joseph knew because of their angelic visitations that that they were going to name him Jesus. But he wasn't officially named until the eighth day. You know, Mary and Joseph circumcised Jesus on the eighth day that was keeping with, with their tradition. You know, when that day came, they followed the instructions of, of the angels and, and they named him Jesus. You know, for many years I, I read verse 21 and then I read verse 22, assuming that the circumcision and the dedication of the temple happened at the same time. But there's a time gap in between verse 21 and 22. The, the circumcision happened on the eighth day, and then it was 32 days later that uh, Mary and Joseph came to the temple to consecrate him to the Lord. Listen to the account once again that's recorded in Luke. It said, when the time for their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now, one of the reasons that they had to wait 40 days after the birth to, to go to the temple for dedication. It says a, a time of purification. It was after a, a woman gave birth and, and because of the discharge of, of the blood you know, in her body, she had to wait 40 days in order to be purified. And so they couldn't go to the, to the temple before the, that, at that point. As I read this account of Jesus' dedication, we recognize that that Jesus was not born into a wealthy home. If he had been born into a wealthy home, they would have brought a, a, a year-old lamb you know, to, to be sacrificed. But because they were poor, they brought a different offering. And they, as they, they came, they, they just brought a, a pair of doves or, or, or two young pigeons. Remember, for, before Jesus was conceived, an angel went to Mary and and, and when Mary visited her, her relative Elizabeth, uh, the, the baby in her womb kicked in her womb the, as, as he was filled with, with the Holy Spirit. You know, and Elizabeth spoke words of, of affirmation over Mary. You know, before Jesus was born, an angel spoke to Joseph. On the night that he was born the, in the stable, there were shepherds who, 
who came and, and shared what the angels had, had said to them in the, the fields. And, and, on, and, and now 40 days later, after his birth, there's yet another sign. The Lord reminds Mary and Joseph the, the baby that they have brought into this temple brought into the temple is no ordinary child. It's amazing to me the all the signs or words of affirmation that that God had given to, to Mary and Joseph over the course of ten months. And you know, it talks about Mary treasuring these things, Mary pondering these things. You know, in, in this passage, I believe it says that they marveled at the words that, that Simeon spoke. You know, there were all these experiences that Mary and Joseph had had, had that was, was affirming the, that God's hand was on, on this child, that, that God was at work in, in their midst with this, this birth. You know, as they had all these, all these instances of, of affirmation, all these instances that God is doing a special thing through, through this pregnancy and through this child that, that was going to, to be born. I believe those words of affirmation, those maybe mountaintop spiritual expen- experiences, were necessary in order to help them through the, the ordinary or, or difficult days. You know, Mary had the, the word from the angel. Mary had the affirmation from Elizabeth. But she still had to go and, and tell Joseph. She needed to, to know that it, it wasn't just her imagination, but, but God was, was at work, and Elizabeth helped to affirm that. You know, she had to go tell her parents, and then she had to face the, the community and, and the things that, that they might say or, or the things that they might talk about. Mary needed those mountaintop experiences she needed those spiritual highs to, to take her through the, the ordinary or, or maybe the difficult days. The words from the shepherds must have been another reminder that God's hand was upon this baby when, when he had been born. You know, Mary and Joseph, even though they have these words of affirmation, they have a lot of days that they're not living on a spiritual high. They have a lot of days which are, are, are ordinary and maybe even mundane. During these 40 days leading up going to, to the temple, you know, it was a time that as parents, maybe they were still looking for the instruction manual. Mary and Joseph were, were consumed by what it meant to, to be new parents. The, the uniqueness of this child may have become ordinary to them in those days because Daily living was overshadowed by the regular responsibilities. They had to feed the baby. They, they needed to rock him to sleep. They, they had to, to change the baby. There were all the responsibilities of, of caring for the ordinary, everyday tasks that they may have forgotten about some of the messages that, that they had been given. Mary and Joseph took the baby to the temple to be dedicated 40 days after his birth, and that's just what faithful Jewish parents did. Well, Mary and Joseph remembered the angelic visitation. They remembered what had happened in, in the stable that night, that after nearly six weeks have gone by, maybe Joseph is finding some part-time work as a carpenter in, in the area. Mary's trying to care for the baby and do those, those daily tasks. Did they really understand the messages that God had given them up to this point. Our scripture reading this morning says that Mary and Joseph marveled uh, about what was said about their child. They may have wondered if they had just dreamed all of this or, or whether God was a part of all of it. With their encounter with Simeon, once again they were reminded that this child was truly special. God had promised Simeon that, that he would live until he experienced the Messiah. He would, would live in, until he, he saw the, 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 the Messiah come to, to fruition. It would have been very exciting to, to, to hear the prophet speak words of, of salvation over, over Israel. But he also said troubling words 
He said that there would be those who would speak against this child, and those are words that no parent would, would ever want to hear. But also there were, were words that were probably confusing to, to Mary as, as he told Mary that a sword would, would pierce her soul. Although Mary probably didn't know what he was talking about at, at that time. She probably remembered the words of, of Simeon the day that she stood at the cross seeing her son die. God gave Mary and Joseph these experiences, these, these encounters to ponder. Over the years, I'm, I'm sure they remembered them. Uh, the, the memories would, would give them courage to, to continue to, to move forward. I want you to, to take a, a moment to, to think about times or experiences in your own life in which you've had an encounter with God, maybe a, a closeness to, to God, maybe someone spoke truth in, into your life, some, some truth that uh, maybe helped to to keep you on track, helped you to, to keep looking forward. You know, what are those, those spiritual experiences in your life that have helped you to keep going, to keep the faith in the midst of the, the ordinary days, you know, despite adversity or times of, of unknowing in your life? What are those things that you hold on to? What are those things that you ponder what part of God's truth in your life helps you to continue to live in a way that is faithful? Well, as we continue to, to look at the, the story, uh, there's a, another person that uh, Mary and Joseph in, encounter as they're in the, the temple, and, and that is they encounter a prophetess by the name of Anna. So we pick up the story in verse 36. It says there was also a prophetess, Anna, the, the daughter of Phineuel and, and the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. Now, the New International Version says that you know, she was a widow until she was 84 years of age, while, while other versions say that she lived as a widow you know, for 84 years. So if she lived as a widow for 84 years, you know, probably you know, 14 was the average year age for, for women to get married in that day. And then there was um, seven years of marriage that would put her at, at 21 and then 84 years as a widow. You know, she may have been over 100 years old. She may have been 105. So whether she was 84 or whether she was 105 or, or someplace, in between, you know, she's described as an old woman who has an encounter with the Christ child. It says that she never left the temple, but she worshiped day and night, fasting and praying. Life had not worked out for Anna like she would have expected. You know, she didn't expect to only be married for, for seven years. She didn't expect to, to be widowed at, at the age of, of 21. But that's what happened. You know, she could have become bitter in, in the midst of her disappointment. But Anna, you know, leaned in and, and fell in the, the arms of God. You know, she would go to the temple. She would do her, her religious duties. She would pray. She, she would fast. She, she was a spiritual example in, the, in that community. I will not define what a an older aged woman or an older aged man is to today. <laughs> but when we are aged, either being there or when we, when we get there, we do not retire from giving witness to our faith. You know, Anna continued to, to give witness to, to her faith even as she was old. She gave witness to what God was doing, and also gave witness to what God had done. If you consider yourself aged or when you, when you get to, to that point, would you rather give testimony to the ways that God has, you've seen God work in your life? Or would you like to, to end your life just being a, a grumpy old man or a bitter old woman? Anna is an example that we are never too old to give testimony 
to how God is, is at work and to give thanks. The, this passage tells us that, that Anna came up to, to uh, Mary and Joseph and, and Jesus and, and, and Simeon at, at the moment that Simeon was pr pronouncing his prophetic words over Jesus. She gave thanks to, to God for, for this child and all that, that he was doing and, and looking forward to the redemption of, uh, of Jerusalem. Now, I want you to notice a, a contrast in this story between Simeon and Anna. It's something that, that I had never noticed by, myself, but uh, you know, a, a commentator pointed it out. When Simeon holds the Messiah, you know, his first words are something to, to the effect of, oh, I've seen the Messiah, now I can die. You know, it, it's like my, my life, you know, it wasn't a, a negative thing, but it's like, oh, you know, I, I'm old, I've been waiting for this moment, it's finally happened, and so now, you know, I can die. But Anna, when she sees the, the Savior, even though she is very old and maybe she's going to die soon as well, her response was one of thanksgiving. Her response was one of praise. Then in verse 39 it says, when, when, Mos when, when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. Now, this is another point in, in Luke's story that uh, kind of the, the timeline, you know, there, there's a gap between verses. Remember back at the beginning, I talked about a gap between the circumcision at day eight and, and going to the temple in, in day 40. Well, probably Mary and Joseph didn't return to, to Nazareth uh, for probably, uh, you know, two to four years. You know, because they, you know, it was an issue that the, the wise men came, they, they went into, um, they, they went in exile to Egypt, and then they, they came back. You know, Matthew talks about that part of the story, but that wasn't important to, to Luke. Those were not details that, that Luke um, needed to, to go into. And so, um, you know, it, it's an issue that, you know, they do return to, to Nazareth, but it probably is not right after their, their visit to, to the temple. You know, Matthew talks about that visit of, of the Magi, and, and all, although we often include the Magi in, uh, in the nativity scene and, and coming to the stable, it actually says that they, they came and found the, the Christ child in a house. And, and Pastor Justin's going to talk about that part of the story you know, next Sunday. You know, as I was thinking about the, the rest of the Christmas story, I, I realized that God was just not in, involved in, in the story through the angelic visitation or, or through, the, through the, the birth of, of the child. But he continued to, to be involved in, in the story as he, as he spoke words of, of truth, words of prophecy through, through Simeon and through Anna. God continued to reveal himself in, in his plan as, as the Magi showed up at the, the door of, of Mary and Joseph. As I think about the, the rest of the Christmas story, I also think about the rest of the Christian story. It's not a story that, that ends with the pages of Scripture. I think the rest of the, the, the Christian story continues to, to be lived out in, in those who say they're his followers. It continues to be lived out in, in the lives of the New Testament church. The, the story continues to be lived out in the lives of believers generation after generation. God's story continues to be lived out in the lives of his people. You know, often the, the spiritual highs help us through the ordinary times. For Mary and Joseph, I believe these spiritual highs were, were, were experiences that helped them through the ordinary or even the, the difficult days. 
So in your own life, you may think, oh, I wish I could live on a spiritual high all the time, but, but God doesn't give us the spiritual highs to stay there. He gives us the spiritual highs to, to see us through in the days of, of challenge and even the days that are ordinary. Our memory verse this week comes from Luke chapter 2, verse 39. It says, when, Mary and, when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. Now, as you memorize that verse, as you reflect on that verse, I want you to remember that Mary and Joseph did what they were supposed to do. They, they continued to, to follow God's leading in, in their life. They continued to, to follow God's instructions in, in the way they lived. But they didn't always live life on a spiritual high. God gave them holy moments. He gave them spiritual highs. But after they had the spiritual high, they returned to ordinary life and ordinary living. In the way of a couple next steps this week, as we come to the end of, of 2021, I, I want to encourage you to, to reflect on how have you seen God at work in this past year? What have been prayers that, that you've had answered? You know, and as you remember those ways that God has worked, as you remember those, those answered prayers, may they be an encouragement to you in, in the days that lie ahead, recognizing that God is still at work. God is still walking with you. And secondly, when life doesn't unfold as you would want or might expect, continue to hold on to faith. Anna's life was not what she had expected, but God was with her. God was faithful, and she continued to live a life of faithfulness and righteousness. So no matter what you, you may face in the days ahead, may you hold on to faith in the process. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the ways that you work in the pages of Scripture. We thank you for the ways that you work in our lives. And Lord, as we recognize ways that you have worked in the past, may it be an encouragement to us as we seek to, to, to move forward, as we seek to live as your faithful disciples. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen.